We welcome you back to the Mile High City scoreless at the break. The United States and Trinidad and Tobago, the U.S. started the day in fourth place in the hexagonal standings. TNT in the cellar on paper. This one should be a no brainer for the U.S., but it's 0 0 at the break. Rob Fernando, Alexi, back here with you. Plenty of U.S. opportunities through the first 45. The best early chance came in the 15th minute, and who else but the Deuce? Yeah, a strange half, and we'll talk about it in a little bit, but the opportunities were there. See Bobby and Johnson at the top of the box, fighting through, and it drops right to Clint Dempsey, gets that left foot, he only gets one step. Still gets some power, puts it right over the bar. John Brooks from long range, things we don't say often. No, and mind you, we didn't have a lot of possession until the 20th minute. And then Brooks said, hey, nobody's attacking me, nobody's closing me, I shoot. Josie Altidore with an opportunity here. Oh, and then the best opportunity of the game for the road team, the big man who plays his club ball in Atlanta, Kenwin Jones. And this is, you talk about an opportunity. This is, this is wide open. Tim oh. Howard in no man's land. He doesn't even come close to this. And Kenwin Jones just hits it off the crossbar. We were talking about altitude. That was the problem. 6-2. That's a high man. Viafania starting this one. And how about the hustle from Dempsey keeping this one alive? And these opportunities coming from White. Viafania. Nice growth. That was good. Yedlin down that right hand side. So uh, let me ask you, why were you frustrated, disappointed, angry at the way they started? I, I was frustrated at the way the United States decided to come out. Bruce Arena's talking about urgency. You know what, Coach? It's on you to make sure they have the urgency and the understanding of how they're going to play. This, this lower type of press, uh, it was confusing because at times you can do that and get an advantage. I don't see what the advantage was for the United States to not high-press this team right from the start. They don't want the ball. They don't want to play out of the back. And when, you're, and when you do high-press them, good things come. So it was a little bit frustrating. Still 0-0, still plenty of time for the U.S. to get that goal that they need. But at some point, they got to get that goal. And I'll tell you two things. The first one, like I said before, the first 15 minutes, Trinidad and Tobago got more possession than the U.S. We were sitting back, 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 back for what? And second, it's 0-0 zero, zero now. That's why I'm going to check. I'm yes. going to put my... We need something? Oh, my goodness. There we go. We look the good luck hot, man. Desperation City, Rob Stone. Yes. You wear it well, my friend. Yes. You wear it's, it well. Uh, we have to win. Remember, one of the themes coming into this game, altitude. The U.S. has been dealing with it for about a week and a half. You're going to find out just how well they have handled it in the second half. 0-0 zero, zero after 45. When this game's in the books, we're going to take out to Mexico. Tecatito. Honduras in action. We'll talk about L3 next. To the friends who never back out. The ones who say hell yeah to happy hour. Always up for another round. TGI Fridays gives you endless apps. Forever. Always endless apps. Ten bucks. I'm getting paid to learn how to run a business. Do things when I want and how I want. Get paid more of some office job. I got freedom. Freedom from all of them. Coming up next on FS1, Hex Leaders Mexico hosting Honduras. L3, three of their first four qualifiers on the road. Now they have two straight at home, including Sunday's big one on FS1 as they host the United States. That game moved up schedule-wise because Mexico's got to get themselves to Russia ASAP as they take part in the FIFA Confederations Cup. Live coverage on Fox Sports begins a week from this Saturday. Difficult group for Mexico, Portugal, New Zealand, and your host, the Russia in Group A. Top two teams from each group automatically move on to the semifinals. No U.S. subs to start the second half and the final 45 from Denver on the backside. U.S. soccer doubleheader this Sunday. The U.S. women's national team, the reigning World Cup champs, live on Fox. And then Jermaine Jones is going to join us in studio in Mexico City for Mexico U.S. Lexi, your advice to Bruce Arena right now. Bruce Arena is not making any personnel changes, but he better have made a mindset change in that locker room for the second half. We'll see you next on the postgame show upstairs. John Stewart Landon. 
underway in the second half here in Denver. 45 more minutes for the United States to get the win that they need to keep their qualification campaign on track for the 2018 FIFA World Cup. No changes at the break for either side. As we were all talking at the half, you've played in these types of games. The, the prettiness, the style, that's out the window. What were their conversations like at the half to try to find a way to grind this out? Raise the tempo, first of all, but then have patience. Don't get out of sorts. Don't start doing things that you wouldn't have done previously. Because around the 50th, 60th minute, we've seen these games open up, Landon, because Trinidad and Tobago might not close down that space that we talked about. And the United States will get chances. So be patient in those moments. Yeah, fitness will become a factor for sure. The U.S. players are fitter. They will be more prepared for an environment like this, a game like this. But Bruce said it before the half, or before they went into the locker room. Urgency. This could be your World Cup life, your World Cup life at stake. And if you're not prepared and you don't bring it this 45, you might not be going to Russia. Nathan Lewis running at DeAndre Yenlin. Got it caught in the spokes and loses it. Jenny, what's the word from downstairs from the U.S. bench? Well, the message from Arena at half was just about re-emphasizing the importance of keeping that width. He said we need to be moving more quickly. He also pointed out he'd like Josie Altador and Clint Dempsey's starting points to be higher. And keep in mind, he was in constant communication with Bobby Wood in that first half. So although no changes now, look to see Wood possibly getting in the mix. And to that point, Jenny, with Josie Altador and Clint Dempsey, I think that one of them needs to start testing this Trinidad and Tobago, keeping them honest. Run in behind a little bit. It'll open up. It'll keep them honest in front of that. Then Christian Pulisic can pick up the ball in those spaces and have the ability to create. But if you don't run in behind, they can squeeze up tight and not have you any space in front. Carlos Edwards in for Kenwin Jones. Cameron beat him to it and cleared it away. Trinidad and Tobago have not been a good second half team. Seven of the ten goals that they have conceded and the World Cup qualifying campaign have come in the second half, tied for the most of any team in the CONCACAF region. As we said, three of the four the U.S. put past them in September came after the halftime break. The U.S. already sending their bench players out to get loose and warm up. Yedlin rolled in for Nagby. And he got it caught up as he was trying to reverse it for Dempsey. It'll be a Trinidad and Tobago throw. I don't know could do anything with it. Nagby able to keep it on Jovan Jones and on Highland. He's able to get it away for Bradley. Trinidad pinned in their zone and not let them out. And you have to make this 45 minutes of hell for them so they can't find any space to breathe and get out of here. Melissa coming back. He was forced off it. Good work by Kevon George there. Plays for Jacksonville Armada in the NASL. Kenwin Jones. Didn't see Bradley there to pick his pocket. That's exactly what you were talking about, Landon. Bradley for Nagby couldn't bring it down. Now let's quickly get a thought of Dr. Joe Macknick, our FIFA match commissioner. We saw it boil up a little bit there into the half, that no advantage given on the, the foul right at the end of the first half, Dr. Joe. Yes, and while we were waiting for Trinidad to come out of their locker room to start the second half, several U.S. players, Bradley and Pulisic among them, gave the referee an earful pointing to the spot of that foul. We're going to look for the next time to see if the referee chooses to get that free kick rather than play advantage. Molino. The bump there from Viafania right in front of the referee. No foul. Molino stepping right in to take it off 
of Fabian Johnson. Viafani try to recover on Molino. Molina will drive in the cross all the way through, just too far for Nathan Lewis. Moment of danger there at the other end for Trinidad and Tobago. As Molino picks this one up, steals it off to Johnson, and Viafani just puts his head down. He can't get there. Looks like he's doesn't have the energy to keep up. Molino puts his head, his head up, and that's a dangerous ball. As you said, John, flashing in front. Just another reminder. They threw multiple reminders at the United States back line in that first half, and again, they've been sitting back, they've been soaking up pressure, but still have the ability on the counterattack to cause the United States problems. Brooks able to find the angle there to get it in for Viafania. Takes the touch, lifting it in too far for Dempsey and Jonathan Jones. That's confidence there to chest it down for Jan Michael Williams. Again, across from the U.S., but where's Josie Altidore? He'd come back to try to find the ball. It's a good cross, but you need players in front of the goal that know how to score, and I, I'd like to see Josie, Clint, Dempsey closer to the goal so when those balls come in, they have a chance to get on the end of it. Very much like the first half, sort of a slow pace, low tempo, low energy crowd, sort of waiting for something to get fired up about. Highland, heavy touch, and they couldn't take it off him. There's a giveaway out of it after all. Yedlin's touch, sending Nagby forward. A little shimmy to create space on Highland. Nagby now trying to get inside of him. Dempsey to return. Darling to Nagby, lost his angle, cutting it back. Yedlin's cross, and stabbed in for the opening goal tonight. From Christian Pulisic. Well, there's the breakthrough for the United States. And it's Michael Bradley who pressured the ball, forcing the turnover. Eric Clarence, and this ball from DeAndre Yedlin sets starting to Nagby, but look at the patience from Nagby. He waits, he waits, burst of speed. Hit the right play to Yedlin. Excellent ball from Yedlin into the box, and that's a goal scorer's goal. Molino crossing in straight from the kickoff for Lewis. The flag is up for offside. Nathan Lewis, who's filling in for injuries and absences up front. It's his World Cup qualifying debut. Tonight, an immediate tying goal by the flag of Melvin Cruz on the far side. Well, you've heard the term, you're most vulnerable when you scored a goal, and that's because you switch off for just a half second after a kickoff. You take a deep breath, you've scored a goal. Let's see if he's onside or if he's drifted offside, Lewis. And Yedlin's a little bit behind, and he is offside. It's an excellent decision from the assistant referee. It's very close. Right, shoulder line. But you can score with your shoulder. And the referee makes the right call there. Stu, I was a forward. I think he's on. <laughs> Cameron in for Altidore, meanwhile. Mikhail Williams tracking him. Pulisic there in support. Altidore able to get a corner out of that as he tried to turn the corner. And Alex Tobago had a would-be leading goal against Mexico in March, taken away by an incorrect offside flag. Pulisic now to take the fourth corner of the game for the U.S. Try to slam the door now. Outswinger from Pulisic. Jan Michael Williams is there. And it is now six goals with five assists in 15 matches for his country. A player who told us yesterday his only real instruction from Bruce Arena in that role, find the ball, find a way to change the game. Well, he's done that. Yedlin's first assist of this qualifying campaign. Nagby, big part of the buildup there as Cameron intercepts the pass. And a reminder of something Caleb Porter has said often about Darlington Nagby, the player he's coached both in college and in the pros for the Portland Timbers. He said Darlington's not a guy who doesn't want to score the goal, even necessarily assist the goal, but he's the guy that wants to be involved in the buildup and the pass that leads to the pass that leads to the goal. Here's Via Fania now, rolled in for Fabian Johnson. Edwards, the defender, able to take him off it. 
well pressured by Altidore. And this is much better from the U.S. now, pinning Trinidad in their end so they can't get out and continuing to apply pressure. It's skipped over Nagby's foot. Still work to be done on the outside by Jovan Jones. Nagby's won the ball back. In for Yedlin. Polisic making the run. Here he is, looking at hard. Polisic considers his options, gets it away off the outside of the post. He had Dempsey in the back post waiting for it. He had Jan Michael Williams down a knee. Nagby tracking it down in the corner once again, having the patience, awareness, picking his head up, and Christian Pulisic with a late run. Now, he made the same run for the goal, and, and that's what I was really impressed with. He's alive, arriving later. Rather than being in that space, where then he has to turn, he has defenders up his back, he's allowing the play to develop, and then he's getting into those areas where he can be most effective. I had a goalkeeper coach at the Galaxy, Ian Poyer, and when Robbie Keane or Mike McGee would do something like that, he'd say, you just can't teach stuff like that. He has this knack for understanding where to be at the right time, and the goal was very indicative of that. Cameron taking it forward. Johnson leaves it for Dempsey. Through ball for Altidore. It's going to find him. Williams able to get there. Still a scramble of bodies. Pulisic to lose ball. Williams again at full stretch of a 6-3 frame to get a paw on that ball. He's down behind the play right now. Referee will blow his whistle and blow the play dead. Jan Michael Williams sacrificing his body but keeping Trinidad and Tobago alive on the night. And that move got a round of applause from Dr. Joe Macknick in the booth here. But I think that's the, the general consensus, the feeling within the stadium that there's purpose, there's intent, there's tempo to this U.S. play. And now you're seeing these cutting runs in behind. They're testing the back line of Trinidad and Tobago. They're putting their under pressure. It's relentless pressure, Landon. And like you said many times in this half, they're not allowing them to breathe. And this is the United States we expected to see in the first minute of this game. No question, and, and if not for Jan Michael Williams, this game looks a lot different for Trinidad, and, and he's been excellent tonight. Well, he's 32 years of age, made his debut back in 2003. He sort of switched off World Cup qualifying cycles as the number one with Marvin Phillip. He's been the starter this cycle, though he missed most of last year with a shoulder injury. Didn't play against the U.S. in September. And Christian Pulisic, listen, it's a worth remembering in a parallel universe he'd be a freshman in college he'd be getting ready for his first summer break instead you're talking about a kid that played 43 games for Borussia Dortmund in his first full season as a professional won the German Cup playing in front of 75,000 week in week out played games in the Champions League at the Bernabeu in Madrid goes and plays in Munich and oh by the way had his bus bombed on the way to a Champions League match something that could have been very deadly had it been a few seconds, a few feet, one way or the other. It's a kid that, when we talk to him, has a wonderful sense of himself, a wonderful maturity. But he has grown up a lot in good and not as good ways over the course of this year. And Jenny Taft down on that field, he's a player that receives a lot of attention and has a lot of people talking to him right now. What more can you add? Well, John, I love that you bring up his age because it just puts it in perspective. And whenever we talk to Bruce Arena about that, he said, you know, we still have to give him some time. You got to allow him to prove himself. Carlos Edwards crossing in. Lewis couldn't hold it up. Nagby's there. And getting back to Pulisic, he has really said that everything we've put in front of him, he's been able to exceed and excel at. And that is just a token to the athlete and his mentality, who he is. And keep in mind, with Bruce, it's also something he wants to continue to let him develop and give him that freedom, guys. Yeah, he said that neither his body or his brain is fully formed. Callan Acosta, speaking of young players, is getting prepared to come on for the United States. We understand from Clint Dempsey. He's got only a few moments more to tie the all-time U.S. goal-scoring mark. Otherwise, we keep the count and the watch going down to Mexico City. Here's Dempsey now. Good work by Eric. No, it is going to be a foul. The assistant referee flagged it on the far side as Fania was tripped up. One hour gone. Here comes the first sub. Here's a look back at the first goal. Guys, I was talking earlier about something you can't teach. Keep your eye on Pulisic in the middle of the, middle of the field. He's waiting, 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 not there, and then bang, a little two-yard explosion. 
He just has a sense for where this ball is going. His timing's excellent. And it's not the most difficult finish, but not easy to slide and put it in. And, and he did a great job. And the kid really is living up to the hype, Stu. And, and you talked about a striker's goal. Well, there's another striker coming off the field right now, Clint Dempsey, who, who would have had that striker's goal had Pulisic not gotten the, the ball first. I thought it was Clint Dempsey when I, when I saw it. It looked like a Clint Dempsey goal. That is goal. a very Dempsey goal. And, and that's what you talked about, though, is Pulisic just held his run a couple of steps. He waited for it to develop. He thought the ball was going to come to Nagby. And then as soon as he saw Yedlin passing, Dempsey not very happy being subbed. He's never happy being subbed. We both played with him a number of times. He wants to be in these games. He also wants to pass your record. Sorry, Landon. Yeah, I don't, I don't care what you say. <laughs> I, I don't care what he says. He wants to beat the record. That's the way Clint is wired, and uh, he's not happy to come off. He knows this game could open up a little, and there's going to be more chances. Along comes Kellen Acosta, the 21-year-old from Dallas. He is fifth year as a homegrown player with FC Dallas. Mistake there and a giveaway for the U.S. Here comes Trinidad and Tobago. Kenwood Jones in the ball. Highland to his left. Bradley able to slow him up, and the U.S. getting numbers back behind the ball. Still the cross. No one there but Jeff Cameron. In the U.S. stretch the other way. Here's Pulisic. Looking off Fabian Johnson to his left. Handing off to DeAndre Edlin on his right. Out the door. Pulisic continues run. He got him behind. Christian Pulisic! What can't this kid do? Goals 10 minutes apart. And boy, does this thing look different now than it did just a little while ago. talk Christian Pulisic after this but I was so impressed with Josie Altidore's movement off the ball what you couldn't see there is he made two or three runs in behind then recognized where the space was he dropped off the back four which a lot of form like this you shoot and you score and the weight of the pass from Altidore was perfect because Pulisic didn't have to break stride he recognized where the danger was he gets in behind and as you said he did the rest Four goals in his last four games for the United States by Christian Pulisic. He scored against Venezuela Saturday night. As Acosta weaves his way through, he's got five in this World Cup qualifying cycle. Tied with Dempsey for the second most, just one behind Josie Altidore. And now it's Trinidad Tobago breaking the other way. Molino to his right for Edwards. And it's Brooks going to ground to break it up. is what it would mean still games to come later tonight Costa Rica hosting Panama Mexico hosting Honduras live here on FS1 Jeff Cameron who if shown a yellow card tonight would be suspended for the game in Mexico City Sunday night giving away that foul it's certainly safe safe to say now if he does if he commits another foul like that he will pick up a yellow card and I just wonder if Bruce Arena will make a change at center back and get Jeff Cameron out of this game you have a two goal cushion it's still not over, there's still 25 minutes to go, but if I'm in Bruce Arena's shoes right now, you have plenty of depth at that position, I would bring on another center back and get Jeff out of there. And generally speaking, Bruce doesn't want to change a center back, but in this scenario, I think he would absolutely consider it. I've got a handful of players down there warming up. Not a center back though, is there? Chance for Trinidad and Tobago to make this nervy once again. It's Highland and Jovan Jones who stand over it. It will be Highland blocked by the wall. Dan Cyrus, he came over to talk to the bench. He was, actually didn't want the ball at all. He was just talking with Dennis Lawrence and the coaching staff about a tweak they want to make. They're preparing a sub down on their bench right now as well. And Winchester are forward who plays in the Mexican second division. Lewis able to hold it up. Molino, the strength on Villafani to keep it. Now Edwards out wide. Numbers flooding in for Trinidad and Tobago. The cross from Edwards. Headed away by Yedlin. Held in though. Here's Highland on the ball. It was Molino who slid in to keep it. Jovan Jones. Nagby the defender. Jones. Great little move to create space. Fought all the way through. And boy, Cameron had to get that exactly right. And he did. It's out for a corner. 
Excellent, excellent defending by Jeff Cameron here. When this ball gets wide, and Jovan Jones has a chance to serve it in. First corner of the game, headed away by Acosta. Island holding it in front of Nagby. Jones lifting it in deep. Brooks just helps it along the far side. Finishing up there. That ball's coming at you so fast, and to get your body right, your feet right, so you can clear it out. That that thing had own goal written all over it. Jeff Cameron was, did an excellent job. Cyrus with a long throw. Man down was Brooks in front of Kenwin Jones. It came off of him. It's going to be a corner for Trinidad and Tobago, their second in quick succession. The U.S. upset. They thought Brooks was fouled there. Big point of emphasis coming off the Venezuela game. Defending set pieces, something Josie Altador said. Bruce Arena spends a lot of time on as a heavy attention to detail for in practice sessions. Hooked in by Jovan Jones. Going to be headed back in by Baton. Howard the punch back out wide for Jovan Jones. Cutting it back on Yenlin. Jones driving in now. A fire deflected just wide. That came last. Oh, the flag is up for offside. It would have been a corner, it could have been an own goal, but the flag is up for offside. And the U.S. dodge a big bullet again. And Trinidad and Tobago will make their first sub. Let's take a look back. This is one part of DeAndre Yedlin's game you want to you see improve. You should know that Jovan Jones is coming back to his left foot every time. And he lets him back on his left foot, and that was almost 2-1. It's Jovan Jones who comes off, replaced by Winchester. Jones, who's in the midst of this phenomenal season for the Seattle Sounders, their top scorer qualifying. Are you surprised that he'd be the player to come off? Well, it seems, it seems after a play like that, yes. He's been, he's been dangerous getting down that left side all, all game long, and you wouldn't have expected that, but maybe they're going to change formation a little bit and change the way they, they play. And the other thing, when you're playing as an outside wing back in a 3-5-2, it is up and down, it's up and down. It saps your energy, so you typically are one of the first subs in that situation. So, although he's been dangerous, you want fresh legs, you want people that are going to continually test those fullbacks for the United States. Jones only arrived on Monday playing Sunday for the Seattle Sounders. It was something Trinidad and Tobago were upset about, that the U.S. got their MLS-based players for a full week before Trinidad and Tobago did. And Tobago got their players when it's mandated by FIFA. The U.S. had to work an agreement with MLS clubs to get those players into camp for a full week plus. Women couldn't quite bring that down on Mikael Williams. So that's time to adapt to the altitude. who's now on the left side for Trinidad and Tobago, rolled in for the substitute Winchester. Cameron and Nagby able to combine to take him off the ball. There's still work to be done here for Cameron. Winchester using his body to get inside, poked it away, but Howard going to get on top of first. And if Cameron had done well defensively initially and then a little too casual on the ball, almost lost it to Winchester. And then there was that dicey little moment again where he's chasing Winchester. Is he going to foul him? Can he get in front? If he does foul him, there's a potential of a penalty or, I think more importantly in this scenario, a yellow card. And this is from years now of being at Dortmund. I can, I can speak from experience being in the Bundesliga. There's so much emphasis on finishing and being calm when you get in front of the goal. You see Pulisic take his time, look up, pick his spot, and hit the net. And at 18, Stu, you and I weren't finishing like that, and it's it's really impressive to see. This is a great passing sequence, which has led to Viafani being on the ball, trying to get around Lewis, lifting in the cross, diving header away by that toe. Lewis did really well there to work it out of pressure in the midfield. It's going to end up as a goal kick. I could barely finish my dinner at 18, Landon. But what stood out for me in talking to Pulisic the other day was about the press in Germany and how they hold you accountable and there was articles written over there about him when Thomas Tuchel left and he was quick to point out to us that with Tuchel leaving it necessarily it wasn't necessarily a bad thing for him he was excited at the new coach coming in and he was also quick to point out to us that all the negative articles he gets in Germany we write the opposite over here in the United States 
and we build him up. Well, there's a reason for that because every time he's in this U.S. shirt, he is performing. Island able to recover there after losing the ball to tackle Melissa Goff and Alejandro Bedoya preparing to come on for the U.S. Quickly upfield, though, it's Nathan Lewis for Trinidad and Tobago crossing it in. Cameron read it the whole way. coming on for Fabian Johnson. 20 minutes to go. Two Christian Pulisic goals to the good. And then Jones could not hold it up. He was able to work out of it. Now Nagby. Fabian Johnson about to come off. Rolled into space for Altador. Johnson and Nagby continuing. Central Altador lowering the boom on Bateau, but he's able to get back to his feet first and win the ball. I might have ended up in the stands if I received a <laughs> challenge like that. Two hookers going at it there. Josie dipped that shoulder right into Bateau. Good, strong play. Keep on George. This thing isn't done yet. Nathan Lewis running it via Fania. Lewis running around via Fania. Bradley sliding through to block the cross out for a corner. We saw it a moment ago with DeAndre Yedlin, and now with Via Fania, they have to do a better job in 1v1 defending. If they do that at Azteca on Sunday, that's probably two goals for Mexico. Third quarter of the night for Trinidad and Tobago. It's Ireland to take it. Jovan Jones off the field. So you know who, where you are, and then when you make a change, sometimes you're reorganizing because the player coming on is not as tall. He's going to pick up a different player. There's miscommunication. But I think with Bedoya and Fabian Johnson, he's not going to be one of the big markers. That would be Brooks and Cameron, some of your taller players. So Bedoya will go in. He'll be a guy probably asked to mark a little bit of space. Yeah, he may go into the same role that Fabian Johnson was in. So I would think that Bedoya now will play on the right side and Nagby will move to the left as well. It would be interesting to see, but that would be my guess. Second sub of the game for the U.S. And Bedoya sprinting in there quickly as Highland sends in the corner. Yedlin was there first. Nagby saw the bodies coming. He's able to escape with the ball. He's trying to run away from Highland, who went really dangerously in from behind, but he couldn't catch Nagby. Pass behind Bedoya, though. He's going to have that replay to him on social media for a few days. Hey, I've been there, Alejandro Bedoya. When you're running at that speed, you have to change direction. You're off balance. You just want to get that one step. Lewis rolled in for Winchester. Try to turn, Brooks shielding him off, and Howard able to come grab it. Poor Bedoya had to sprint in to defend the corner and then sprint out to get on the counter, and uh, there must have been a crater or something there. We couldn't see what happened. Jenny Taff, what's the word from downstairs on that sub? Just learning from the coaching staff that bringing in Bedoya first for the obvious fresh legs. He also wanted to get some defensive help for Kellen Acosta and Michael Bradley, and also just another body for those restarts. Ball by Acosta there for Yedlin. Pulisic out wide for Bedoya. Altador is in the middle. Bedoya waiting on it. Back for Yedlin. Trinidad and Tobago preparing to make their second sub of the game. Yedlin hooking it in for Altador. He's got the strength on Miko Williams. He goes down. Looks vainly at both the referee and his assistant, both of whom wag their fingers at him. I think the referee saw Josie Altador dip his shoulder and have that 50-50 earlier and says, I know you're a little stronger than that. It was good patient buildup, though, down in this corner. Just a little bit of contact, but not enough for a penalty. Lynn Highland is off. Leston Paul coming on. Went to college at the University of South Florida. Over the Central FC team has won the last three league titles in Trinidad and Tobago. This is his first competitive appearance for his country, only friendlies up till now. Melissic driving through, got on the way for Altador, and here, a lot later than we might have thought or expected, is the game's first yellow card. That's to Paul, the man who just came on. Pulisic's hungry for a hat-trick. 
feet in tight spaces. Just uses that speed. Burst past the defender. The referee gives a yellow card. Stu, what makes him so special is he does so many things well. He gets on the end of the cross. His passing is good. His finishing is good. He can run at people. There's really nothing this kid hasn't been able to do yet. And as we said earlier, the legend continues to grow, and he is getting better and better with every touch. One thing he hasn't yet done is score a hat trick for his country. He would be the youngest. 15 minutes, John. A wide stretch. How many 18-year-olds are scoring hat tricks, John? At this level, I, I was telling Acosta, who has, can score from these free kicks. We've seen him do it this year for FC Dallas, standing over it. And he's going for goal, and he forced the save out of Jan Michael Williams. We asked Tim Howard yesterday, who's been hitting the ball the best in the free kicks? He said Acosta, who swings it in a second time, and Kenwin Jones is there. Six save for Williams tonight. Acosta working hard to keep it, but then gives the pass away. It's a long way out, Kellen Acosta, and John, you said it. He scored these this season for FC Dallas. See what he was going to do all, all the way. Gets it up and over the wall. Good trajectory on the ball. I've been very impressed with the United States' performance in the second half. It, it's had everything that we talked about with tempo. They've been very professional in how they've managed this 2-0 lead and got numbers behind the ball, been patient in possession, taking the sting out of the game, killing any type of moment, momentum that Trinidad and Tobago started to pick up. We didn't want to be too dramatic, but this was their World Cup lives on the line, and, and they responded the way you would expect them to. This is how it would look as it stands. Again, the two games later to come, but the opportunity with results, unless the U.S. is able to get a couple more, a Panama loss or draw would see the U.S. stay in third, an automatic qualifying spot at the halfway mark going into the game Sunday night in Mexico City. And another reminder, coming up right after us here on FS1, Mexico hosting Honduras. And we start the clock for Sunday night. I'm curious on your thoughts, Landon, but after the first half, I wouldn't imagine many United States fans out there would have been feeling too optimistic about that trip to Azteca. I've seen it positive changes in the second half. I've seen this team push forward. I've seen that tempo that they can bring. It's going to be a completely different game, but it puts you in a different mindset now going into that game on Sunday. Listen, we're all human, right? And this game was not the sexy game. This was the game that you get through, you have to win. But everybody's thinking about Mexico, whether they admit it or not. And I think that was on their minds in the first half. I'm, I'm guessing Bruce went in at halftime and, and gripped him to them a little bit and let them know that this was the game that mattered. And, and now they can go in with a little confidence, a little less pressure into Mexico City. Nathan Lewis for Trinidad and Tobago. And the Molino. All able to reverse that in for Winchester. Keeps it up via Fania. Easy stuff for Tim Howard. His second save of the night. Jorge Perez Navarro, Kobe Jones, and Francisco X Rivera will have the call. We'll all be decamping somewhere back to the hotel to watch that game coming up next year on FS1. Looks like the U.S. is going to make their third and final sub. Bobby Wood has been recalled from the corner of the field where the subs are warming up. And them couldn't flip that along for Godoya. And if it is Bobby Wood, John, that's essentially three attacking substitutions from Bruce Arena. Surprises me a little bit. He's not bringing out any players that are on yellow cards. Now it's up. It's those players' responsibility for these last 10 minutes to be very smart. Don't do anything silly. But it also tells me that Bruce Arena is looking at that next game and saying, I'm going to need energy and fresh legs up front. I'm going to need people behind the ball defending possession. This is Winchester. It's Viafania's giveaway. And that come off Viafania. It is going to be a corner. But I also need whether it's Josie Altador, whether that's Clint Dempsey, Bobby Wood, whoever it might be that plays up front for the United States, they're going to be counted on to relieve pressure. If you are sitting deep at Azteca at times, which it's going to happen, as much as U.S. fans will hope you don't, that's inevitable. You have to soak up some of those waves of pressure, and they're going to need energy then to go forward and break. Kevin Molina to take the corner this time. Outswinger from him. Bounced off of Kenwood Jones. 
At the side of his face, Polisic not going to win that foot race, but he forces Hall, who officially was on the field for 16 seconds before conceding the yellow card foul to Polisic earlier, forcing him to clear it out for a throw. Clint Dempsey was obviously not happy to come off the field. You could see it in his face. I think coming into these fixtures, Bruce's idea was to play Clint 80, 90 minutes tonight and maybe not play him in Mexico, but him making that sub tells me that he may start Clint again on Sunday. And, do you play and, Clint in that game? I think I, I think I probably do after playing 60 minutes here. So uh, Bruce will definitely talk to him and, and get him back on board. And I know Clint wanted to score. He wanted to stay in this game. But Bruce wants to play him on Sunday. And I think it's very obvious that bringing him out at that point gives him the option to play him Sunday now. Kenwin Jones, who hit the bar on a header in the 33rd minute. How might things be if that gone in? He's off as the third and final sub. It's Jamil Boatswain, two goals in his first four appearances for Trinidad and Tobago, who replaces him. And it'll be Josie Altidore, officially got an assist. And Christian Pulisic's second goal tonight. It'll be the third and final sub for the United States. Bobby Wood, the man to replace him. Audits, but he was the one doing the work that opened up space for others. Redlands cross, Wood couldn't bring it down. Polisic laying it back for Nagby. Wood back for Nagby and broken up that time by Kevon George, but Acosta will hold it in. Redland took it in for Bedoya. and Kellen Acosta's in space and said the cross. Finding Bobby Ward off the post. And Cyrus was there to redirect the rebound out of traffic. Second time tonight the U.S. has hit the Woodward. The U.S., if they can tack on another, would stop putting pressure. Costa Rica just above him on the goal differential tiebreaker, which could be very valuable when they count it all up in October. As Lewis intercepts the pass for Villafania. These are the games as a striker for Bobby Wood. When he gets the call 10 minutes to go up 2 0, you know you're going to get chances. It's an ideal situation, and he got one there inches away from 3 0. Out of there by Cameron. Chester has it again. Good boy. Tough challenge. Yellow card. Boy, not one of the players in yellow card jeopardy for a suspension. Probably just a little late here. He ends up getting the ball, but he comes through the defender or the attacker first, and I think it's the right call. Two subs, two yellows. It's efficient. Five minutes to go. And a free kick here for Trinidad and Tobago, who could still make life interesting. Molino not going to get over Bradley's head. Lewis, work by Wood. Melissa, one on three. Goes for a tumble, but it falls to the feet of Nagby. a little bit what an aberration that was in November when the U.S. lost to Mexico. They hadn't conceded a single goal in the final round, the hexagonal round of 2013. And now as it stands, you're looking at 6-0 over Honduras, 2-0 over Trinidad and Tobago. They've been able to dig out from under the goal differential deficit in that 4-0 loss in Costa Rica. It's never really been the issue, the U.S. guys being able to get results at home. We start to slowly shift our focus Cautiously, we're still four minutes this top. It's time to go to Sunday night in Mexico City. What encourages you two about what you've seen tonight? Well, there's been talk about the potential formation change against Mexico. How do you line up against them? I think the United States have been very efficient in the second half. They're understanding their balance is better in the 4-4-2. I would keep it the same way 
You're not going to be able to have as much space in midfield with Pulisic so far in front of Michael Bradley because Mexico had much better midfielders on the ball. When they are in possession, you need numbers back. So it's all about the personnel. Who is Bruce Arena going to play up front? And I would be playing Bobby Wood and Josie Altidore because they give you a different type of energy, a different type of battling. You see how you're doing, soaking up pressure. You try and get a relief. But to get out something out of Azteca, it has to be a brave and battling performance. Landon. I think what what they can look at is the way Trinidad started this game against the U.S. Get some possession, take the wind out of Mexico's sails, let them defend a little. Mexico like to play very attacking. They like to have the ball. They don't like defending. So if you can keep the ball a little bit, make them run, you might open them up and tire them out. Good sequence on the outside. Viafania opening it up for Nagby. Pulisic making his way in the box. Nagby back for Viafania. Good enough height on that to get it over Paul's head. And that's a foul whistled against Callan Acosta coming up the back of Sheldon Bateau. They were looking for something to cheer through large stretches of that first half. They've got a pair of Christian Pulisic goals. A good save by Tim Howard in particular. And as it stands, a win that keeps the U.S. square on track to get to the World Cup next summer in Russia. Trinidad Tobago, meanwhile, the last lights perhaps are flickering out of their hopes to make the World Cup for a second time in their history. Mateo now is staying forward. Bradley got caught as he took the ball away. Pulisic with Wood in front of him. Two on five. go for that third or they just see this thing out with possession I think they're still gonna push for that third but Bobby would turn back when he'd been played in by Pulisic it was a two on four situation and we are moving the ball around not with purpose quite happy in possession but if it if that little opportunity does open up they're gonna keep pushing good touch by Wood on the pass from Cameron but straight back to the feet of the U.S. When I was playing in these games, not from a goal differential standpoint, but just because you knew there was space and it was a little easier to have a chance to score, you absolutely want to keep going. And I'd get a little frustrated if we were keeping the ball like this because I'd want to go score. But you have to be smart and you got to make sure you win the game first. Costa releasing Nagby. Wood in the middle. Bedoya closing as well. Nagby driving to the byline. Rolls it in front. Mikael Williams was there in front of Alejandro Bedoya. about to go up three minutes of stoppage time still left here tonight and the crowd of 19,188 expanded from the normal capacity here at Dick's Sporting Goods Park starting to trickle their way out for a lovely Colorado summer evening Pulisic handball Effective, not beautiful, but the result you needed, and now you go to Mexico City with some confidence, and, and you're playing a little bit with house money now. You want to get a result, but it's not imperative now. Yeah, and positives, Christian Pulisic, but also John Brooks and Jeff Cameron. I thought both of them today have really marshaled that attack from Trinidad and Tobago. Good moments from the fullbacks. Some worrying moments also in 1v1 defending, which will be much more difficult to reference many times against Mexico. I thought Michael Bradley in the second half, he set the tempo. He was closing down higher up the field. Bobby and Johnson had a quietly efficient day. And then Josie Altidore, excellent once again. As he said, this was the one that they knew they had to get. There was no other option. But it's the next one they've been preparing for. A plan in place since January to get themselves 
ready for the 7,000 plus feet of elevation. The team that Josie Altidore reiterated to us yesterday is feeling particularly in sync. On the same page with what Bruce Arena wants. in that first half it's a win it's further improvement on their goal differential well, if something really unnecessary happens in the next 60 seconds your four players you came in with important players all of them sitting on a yellow card suspension will all be ready to roll Sunday night in Mexico City Cameron much about that. Molino able to skip away. Rolled wide for Carlos Edwards. Both swing in the middle, one of the cross. Edwards couldn't get it away. Done tonight here in Denver. That young man adds to his legend. That man adds to his legend. It's fully back on track with a win. Start the clock. Sunday night, 7.30 Eastern here on FS1 at the Estadio Azteca. But for now, the U.S. celebrates a 2-0 World Cup qualifying win over Trinidad and Tobago. Here's how it looks. And we'll watch later tonight in just a few minutes. In fact, on FS1, Jorge Perez Navarro, Kobe Jones about to bring you Mexico against Honduras, Costa Rica, and Panama as well. But the U.S. as it stands into those automatic qualifying spots in the top three of the hexagonal standings. Both goals for Pulisic tonight. Is he ready to run the show for the United States in Mexico City? It's going to be a different type of show, but he's ready. He's ready for everything that's been thrown out of his way. To this point in his career, he looks ready to take it to the next step. Whatever that may be, it's an incredibly high level, but such a talented player. Our Century 21 player of the game, no points for correctly guessing. It is Christian Pulisic, two goals on the night, four in his last four for the United States. A pretty obvious choice here, John, and he was excellent. And to your, to your question, is he ready for Azteca to pull the strings there? Absolutely, nothing intimidates this kid right now. And when you're on this kind of form, you let him play and you keep going. Seven goals and five assists in 15 games for his country. More to come here from Denver. Still more to come from Mexico City as well in this doubleheader as this one finishes United States 2, Trinidad and Tobago nil. The United States now unbeaten in six matches under Bruce Arena. That includes two World Cup qualifying wins and a draw, seven points out of a possible nine. After match day two, they were in last place in the hex. Tonight, they are in third. One of the reasons they have elevated so quickly, the play of Christian Pulisic, who's live right now with Jenny Taft. Well, it was the three points you guys needed. Another dominant performance for you, Christian. And there was a clear difference in the second half performance from the team. What changed? Yeah, again, uh, it just took us a little while to get going. I mean, we had some chances in the first half, but we just couldn't put them away. But then uh, once we wore them down a little bit, uh, our, our quality started to come out, and we showed them at the end. So it's a good game. Now for you, six goals, last nine games with the national team. How do you keep this going? Uh, I mean, goals, you know, they, they come and go. As long as I just keep working hard and uh, just trying to help the team win and doing what I can out there, uh, they'll keep coming. So I feel confident right now. and. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're happy as a team. You knew it was going to be a grind. Two games in four days. Next up, Mexico on the road in the altitude. How's this team feeling? Uh, it's going to be a tough one down there in Mexico, especially. But we really want some revenge on them from when they got us earlier this year. So uh, we're, we're really confident going to that game. And we're going to come out with a win there, too. Right. Yeah. We will see you down there. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Rob? Love the confidence from the 18-year-old Christian Pulisic, the Hershey, Pennsylvania native has either scored or assisted on seven of the U.S.'s last eight goals. He is becoming, Lex, an absolute game changer in front of our eyes. He's the real deal. He is. He he's is, a kid. He's living up to the hype. I know in the United States, especially after a, a pass with uh, Freddie Adu, and, and 
being worried that you're going to break a player that's very, very young and you're going to put too many too much pressure on him or too many expectations it's it's okay get on the hype train from christian pulisic it's fun to watch it's a joy to watch he's excited about it we should be excited he's about earned it. it as well and, and he's absolutely earned it now as far as the game today all right look you beat, you beat trinidad and tobago and you wasted a half the cheery side of me says three points that's all that matters my grumpy says well you yeah. did what you're supposed to do that's it because we are not happy but we are satisfied we went at the three points the eagles had What's the difference? I told you at halftime. I put oh, the hat. Right? It was a lucky hat, and it, yeah. it was two goals. Very impressive with the policy. Very impressive with the whole team, how they changed the second half. After match day two, again, the U.S. was in last place. They're now in third, and they're going to be watching what's next on our air. Mexico, Honduras, El Tree on top of the hex, and the U.S.'s opponent Sunday live here on FS1. Another shutout for Tim Howard. The road to Russia continues next. Jorge Perez Navarro, Kobe Jones with the call of Mexico and Honduras.